let's continue with our basic Rhino conversation. And before we jump in, uh, I just want to mention that, you know, everything you learn here is just one way of looking at things. Although we go through all the tools in Rhino, there are, of course, a lot of like methods and workflows, which probably are very different to what and how I do things. So just keep that in mind. Learn as much as possible from as many people as possible. Okay, let's jump in. Last time we, we stopped with layers and materials and today I want to continue with modeling. But what I want to do is that I, um, at the beginning I was going through each tool step by step, one by one, and I want to continue with that, really. That's, uh, I think it was good. Sometimes I can't use it on the model, so I will just show how that works, but might not use it in, in the model I'm actually building. So just keep that in mind. Okay, let's continue. Yeah, that's somewhere we left off. I also had a tree in here. I don't know, I didn't save it. Did I save it? Yeah, I did a... I did a sun hour study here on that. Uh, let's go into rendered view. Oh yeah, here's our tree as well. So we have everything. Um, a bit, I don't want to see the background all the time. So I might go just here and put, yeah, I think that's for now that's better. So you saw that here I changed the background and the display mode rendering, or uh, rendered this display mode rendered. And I just changed here background I could always go back uh, to use the render settings if I want so but for now I think that's fine and then we also turn off the tree we don't need the tree at the moment just so everything's more fluid and I, I like actually to work in the rendered uh, mode if you have a computer which is not very strong and that might be a problem especially if you have shadows on but then you just switch to another um, to, to another view mode uh, dis display mode for example, shaded. Um, what I want to do here, I, the ISO curves, which are the division lines here on these surfaces, like the same as here, they're very useful in some instances if during modeling and uh, sometimes to just understand the geometry better, but I don't want to see it at the moment. So I can also turn it off here in the properties. So I can select these and go into the properties go on ISO curves and just um, go here on show surface ISO curves. You can turn that off, then it's off. It's like this. Here it would be like, for example, can, if I turn it on and you see the mesh uh, or let, let's say the, the how, on how the surface is divided. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, we stopped somewhere here. Surfaces. Well, we did uh, layers and, and materials and render settings and so on and now we want to continue here and I think for the surfaces we stopped somewhere here with patch surfaces so we created uh, we used the patch command to create this surface from contour lines that was quite uh, straightforward and now we I just pulled it out and so we can see the different tools and commands and we, we go through one by one again uh, as I said before yeah, we, we can't might not be able to use all of them yeah we 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 used um in the f in in the first modeling uh, where we first started the model i used both of these um but i i just want to go again like step by step through through these ones and whenever i can use it i will use it here okay let's uh, rectangular plane that we did that already already here and uh, you have a lot of options here um as you can see again you already get an option to do a different version of it and they, they are all here so this is basically from corner to corner then you have a, like a three point rectangular plane a vertical one which also works with three points and then the plane fit for points and i think you already can see that as a pattern so we had something similar when we did the, the lines and we had something sil similar when we did the circle and so on we had this fit through points option with all the other tools as well so very quickly and actually don't need to open this panel here because you're gonna have the same things again there's just one more infinite plane not a big fan of it um, but yeah sometimes it's useful and you can try that yourself the the infinity infinite plane okay let's very quickly again so we have normal corner to corner we have the three point version which is it's good if you already have an angle so for example this is not this is in an angle to the world coordinate system so that means i can define my direction the direction of of the plane better 
So I can, for example, if I want to create here an, an, like an overhang, then I can do that like this. I can move it. We already discussed moving. Maybe I can use, uh, maybe I can use it to create a, a balcony here. Balcony with, let's say, 2.5 meter or two meters. Of course, it's not a balcony, it's just a plane, but could become a balcony. But the vertical plane, this works exactly the same, but it always depends on where you are, in which coordinate system you are at the moment. So for example, if I use that in the right view, then it's gonna have a different, will work different than if I use it in the perspective view. So if I use it, for example, here, then it doesn't go vertical, it goes according to this, um, to the coordinate system in this viewport, just to keep that in mind. Cutting plane, I use cutting planes quite a lot. For example, let's, let's make a copy of this and now I can make a cutting plane and also works uh, depending on your coordinate system. So it asks me to which objects I want to cut, choose this one and now I have the same options as before. I can either use um, the like a line and then it's automatically a, a vertical plane. So it's actually works similar to this one, just to, that it becomes automatically a plane which is defined by the extent of your model. So it automatically gives the height so it can cut everything. It doesn't cut yet. So I need to ask to cut everything if I want to cut something. And then can use the split function, for example, or the trim function. So either you use this, the trim function, then you select the object which you want to cut with. And if you use the split function, then you first would uh, select the objects you want to split. So if you can do this and then split, and then it asks you with what. And then you could, for example, remove all these. Oh. For example, if you want to see a section, the trim function, trim, then you select the objects you want to trim with, and then you can trim. So that's one way to use cutting plane. There are other uses, of course. The next one is interesting. It's adding a picture plane. That's quite it's quite good. If you it's if it's just a matter of having like a, an image in your scene, then you can use this. And um, yeah, it works like this. So it, it asks you to choose the image. Let's choose an image from my old videos, um, like this one. And again, you have the same options as before. Three point vertical center um, or around the curve. And then you can also specify if it should be one to one. This is uh, that it doesn't distort your image. I guess I have never tried that. But yeah, let's use the, the three point version. And then I can start here, end of edge, and then the orientation. And that way you have your, have my own advertising in the model. I used this also in another video, which was um, the sub D modeling tool where I got basically a, two pictures, uh, a front view of a Phalaenopsis orchid and a side view model with these. That was, that's very handy. It's, it's very useful and a well-known technique also when you do um, mesh modeling. You always model front and then side front at the same time, especially for uh, organic modeling. That's perfect. And yeah, that gives you the opportunity to actually put images uh, as a background. There are other, other options. Extrude straight. So we could use that action to build our uh, small pool here. Originally, I thought about a rectangle pool, but, but we can have any shape. And I will just make a shape just for now. I go into top view. And, for, and to make sure that I actually I'm on that surface, I can, I can modify my origin to be automatically onto that surface. So you can, with this tool, you can set the C plane to object. So I can use this, close extrusion. Let's, let's try it again. Okay, now, now it should work. 
So now my my C plane is exactly on top of this of this uh, surface here, and now I can draw. It's definitely a very unusual pool, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just showing you what to do, what, what we can do. So, okay, I can, as you can see, I can extrude anything here with this one. And there are, again, there are other options. And again, you see that they're all here again. It's, I, I don't get it why we need to have this in, in a separate sub menu, but you can see that this extrude along curve is here, extrude to a point and extrude a ribbon, ribbon offset and so on. They're, okay, ribbon offset is not in here, but this is here and extrude curve taper. So we could um, use straight. Let's try straight first. And I go here to ghosted view because we're gonna see how that looks like. I, I use the command from here. So you see which command I'm using, but you, but pay attention, pay attention to this one here, to the command itself. So you learn the commands also. So that allows me to pull, pull it just in a straight fashion. And you have a lot of options here. Uh, for example, solid or not. And in my case, I want to have it solid. Deepest point, I want to have it minus 1.5. And because I drew it the other way around, it's, you always need to play a bit here and to see which direction it actually then extrudes. So yeah, you can see it's now extruded this way. Let's go into wireframe maybe. So now that was extruded straight. My curve is still here. So what I could try, of course, is extruded along another curve. That's also possible. So I just show how that works, but I might not use it. So what I can do, I can, I could do like a create a vertical line here, from any from any point really, vertical line which is as tall as the building. Let's isolate these so you can see it better. With you can do that with this one, isolate objects or isolate uh now I, I lost my vertical line I, it doesn't matter I'll draw a new one so i could then or go down let's let's go down i draw a line here and then i draw a second line on top of it with more division points i'm going to delete the first one and this is my second one and it has these control points which i can modify i think you already know where i'm getting to so now i have this kind of shape and then I could extrude my object along this curve if I use this one. So now it asks me which curve I want want I want to use to extrude this shape. Weirdly sometimes it does this, extrudes it in a different direction, which is interesting. But yeah, let's we can do that like this. Uh, no. Yeah it, it just extrudes it in a way it's it's just one direction. It really follows only that curve um, in this one certain in, in this one direction. Meaning that where on one side it's it's going in and then up. On the other side it goes out and then up. So I will not use that, but for sure it's useful. Then we have the tapered version that could be interesting for the swimming pool. So we could. So if I use this, then you see that it's tapering. And of course it makes weird things as long as soon as the, the base curve becomes too small. There's also like, uh, you can also specify the angle here and if the corners should be sharp or not. So we could specify the angle, say 10, then of course the, the tapering is much f stronger. I would go even more, just testing, 45, you know, it's tapering like this. And of course it goes also in the other direction. Quite interesting, quite interesting move to a point that's also quite cool it's um we could do actually our uh, like our umbrella let's let's do an umbrella let me first finish the yes let's finish the the pool first um we just use a normal straight extrusion which we are which we already have um we just need to cut it out of that shape there's also an option to so there are several options you can do that. And we will we'll go through booleans uh, at some point. What else can you do? You can take this and use a command. Uh, and I will just hide this first. Use a command called, called make hole. Make hole. We'll get, we'll, uh, we'll get there. But a 
I could select these surfaces here, both of them. So this one and and our main our land form, and then just cut it through. And that didn't work. I don't know why. Make hole. Make 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 hole. Yeah. Okay. It seems like it doesn't work with uh, open surfaces, but you can see that it's cutting quite nicely through this closed poly surface. And then we could just um, take this and cut with this. That also works, although it's not in the same plane. It still will cut. It still cuts uh, this thing out like a cookie cutter. Now I have this hole. Selectively get. Make this reappear, and now you, you, you say, All right, but now you have this closed surface on top. Well, we can get rid of it by just extract surface, and then it asks me to select surface, select this one, enter. And now this part is it's extracted from the other one, or let's keep it, let's, let's keep it and use that as a water surface. This is gonna be our water surface. Zero six water and change object layer. We also we I showed that before. Change object layer. Now we have this in in here and this one. I want to um, another layer. Zero seven pool. Let's hide this forward. That's that becomes my pool. Okay. So and this I want to I want to pull down underneath the paving. Just for now, we can work out the pool details later. So this one, I'm gonna move, I use move, and I grab here a knot, I have knots on here, on the snap op options, and move it down. Again, I want to turn off my surface, ISO, ISO surfaces, and let's give it another material, mm -mm -mm -mm. metal. What kind of metal? Metal dots. I, I I never tried this to, to material, but let's why not? Nah, nah, I'm not sure. It's a bit extreme. It's not hundred percent what I want, but it doesn't matter. And then we can pull the water surface a bit lower. And this is here, and we can choose another material. Is there is there a material? Fluid glass, maybe blue glass. <laughs> yeah, it looks more like a pool. Yeah, that's was very simple now. Extrusion. And yeah, I said we're gonna build this um, let's use this thing here to build our umbrella. So as you can remember we had um let's call this umbrella. Well, uh, as you can remember, we did this polygon, use the polygon tool, we can use number of sides, I think six is fine. Umbrella with two meters, don't know, maybe. It's gonna be a very simple umbrella though, very simple. So let's try more sides here. Eight, I think eight, I, th I think six is fine. Okay, and the size, let's say 160, 1.6 meter, okay. So we have this, and then we can use our extrude to point. But I think we need to first define a point. So um, I would just go here and go in, snap to the center with our snapping tool, and draw a vertical line from the center. So I go here, snap to the center, and then let's say that is um, 0.5 half a meter and now we can use this tool here extrude the point it's this is just one way to do let's use a double sided material so outside it's outside is yellow and then inside on the back it's red kind of a magenta red oh it's the opposite but that doesn't matter now we have an umbrella with a two-sided material cool and I can use 
I think I leave that for now. Okay, the ribbon. The ribbon is that's an interesting tool. It can be used in a lot of things. I was just resetting my origin, but we could, for example, again use this. Select our landscape. Oh yeah, now it works. Select our landscape, and now I can draw on top of it. I can draw a, a, like a puff here, for example. It goes behind the building and to the front. And now I can take this and draw the ribbon. Let's go here. Let's make it 1.2. That's pretty good. And now I can also extrude this one. So I can extrude this surface. Although it's not flat, I can still extrude that. Extrude surface. Why is it not extruding surfaces? Okay, let's just use this one then. Extrude surface. That's what I want. And I have it already selected. I just need to um, extrude it. And I know that we, what did we use here? I think 0 0.2, 0 0.1. 15, 0 0.15. It's not perfect, um, but it's pretty good if, I mean, it and probably would work in a lot of renders very easily. Uh, you wouldn't even notice that it's just put on top of the, of the landscape, especially if you add planting and stuff like that. And if you want, you can even move it down a bit. Yeah, here it's a bit, but again, you know, we we will get there. We will also do a very neat kind of model, like path modeling at some point. But it's just to show you the tools. And let's go here and put it on exterior pattern, paving exterior, and let's match the mapping. We also discussed it before. And again, I want to turn off this. Also delete the, the line here. Almost looks like a big advertising. We miss our pool surface. Let's see where that is. The water. Oh no, it's here. It's just not visible. Let's try to make it less clear. Not really what I wanted. Okay, back on track. I um, yeah, I found like a very quick texture. Maybe let's try that noise texture. Just imitate water a bit at least. And just make a planar mapping. It's almost a bit too small. Five. Five. And then what we do also is in the material settings here, we will uh, reduce this a bit mm, too much. I'd like to know if this reflects here. Yeah, I think we can play here quite a quite a lot. Let's don't forget the other tools. Okay, next. What's next? The ribbon offset. We can have a look very quickly. I never really used it, but let's try it. Let's let's use it with a circle. Maybe. So it basically creates a ribbon, a continuous ribbon on a continuous uh, border curve. Closed curve. I think it needs to be closed. Let's see. Maybe not. So if I use this here. Nah, it needs to be closed. Okay, it needs to be closed. And then you can choose the distance. Oh, it was too fast. Just the distance here. You can even rebuild the curve. Okay. So if you want to have more control points and so on. And then what what it fills in, you can add a none, then it just creates another. It's just an offset basically of, of that curve. It's, it's a mixed sweep to network surface or a sweep to. That looks quite promising. Here you can have like additional outputs from that object, meaning if you want to have like, for example, these curve segments, I will just use it like this, that's it. I don't really know yet for what. Maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's my, Maybe it's trampoline. That's my trampoline. Extrude surface. Uh, now we actually, I can show you this. So uh, ribbon on on surface. Let's now I can actually show it much better. It's much better. So now if I draw a line here, 
Yeah, let's do this actually. You can draw a spiral. top of it and then create uh, a fin perpendicular to the surface it becomes weirder and weirder mm -hmm. and then in the next video I'm gonna show you the the rail and the, the sweep with two rails and a revolve Draping, object, draping surfaces on objects and so on. See you next time.